This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series. Uh, continue our look at special systems, uh, in particular fire alarm systems, and uh, this video has to do with the fire alarm control panel. Uh, so the first type of system, a communication system we want to look at, uh, is probably the most common of all of them, that's the fire alarm system. Uh, fire alarm systems are not always required. Uh, the local codes and the fire marshal are going to determine that, uh, and they have, you know, ultimate authority. Fire marshal does on what that has to be done and and how he wants to see it perform and stuff like that. So what type of system it is. Uh, fire alarm systems have several aspects, uh, but in general, it can be divided into three main parts. Those parts are the fire alarm control panel, and in association with that are enunciator panels. We'll talk about those. Uh, initiation devices, so you know what sends a signal to the control panel to let it know that there's a problem. And then notification devices, this is the way that it, once there is a problem detected, you can communicate to all the occupants in a building that uh, what's going on. So uh, we want to, this lecture we're going to talk about fire alarm control panels. So each fire alarm system will have a main fire alarm control panel, so you'd abbreviate it as FACP. Uh, that is the, this is the central processing unit for the system. All devices in the system will communicate with the fire alarm control panel in some way or another. So they'll be connected in some way uh, to either get information from the panel or to send information to the panel. So you can see some examples of some pictures there of what some, some panels look like. Uh, fire alarm systems can be one of two types, technically, uh, as far as how they function and are connected. The two types of systems are a hardwired system and then an addressable system. So the hardwired systems basically are never specified anymore. Uh, I haven't seen one specified in new construction probably in 20 years. Um, but they still exist out there in older buildings, so you need to be aware of them. Now you can convert them. There's ways to do that. Uh, the owner wants to do that if you go in to do a renovation in an older building. Uh, the problem with these types of systems uh, are that they have what's called loop cards. So it's kind of like slots in your computer. So you can put another slot in, a card in there, a loop card, and they can usually control a certain number of devices depending on you know, certain factors. And so if there is a problem detected on a device, really all I can do is tell what loop is in an alarm. So you have to be kind of strategic how you break that up. So the way we used to do it was, you know, you'd have like one loop card for the first floor, a loop card for the second floor, you know, or, or major sections of the building. That way we could at least narrow it down. Uh, couldn't narrow it down to the device, but we could narrow it down to the loop coverage of the system. Of course, that's very different than with an addressable system. So with an addressable system, each device has its own address, so much like an IP address. Um, on a computer. So in this case, I can get much more granular with narrowing down where the alarm is. It can tell me the exact device. And you know, if I have it set up correctly and my information is up to date, you know, I can know exactly where that is in my system. That's, that's a pretty nice feature. Uh, fire alarm control panels can vary in size, appearance, and capabilities. You, know, you can get the smaller, more economical ones for a small building, but if you get to high rise, you know, it's going to have to be able to do some different things. Uh, all fire alarm control buildings for buildings <clears throat> with public access, though, must have emergency backup, which that's usually accomplished by a battery or a series of batteries, and it has to have the capability to contact the local fire department in the event of an alarm. <clears throat> so for these type of systems, it is against the law, technically, for anyone but the fire marshal or his or her representative to reset the fire alarm control panel. I personally have seen that violated a couple of times. Uh, I was in a restaurant one time, and then another time was locally here at the movie theater at the mall. Popcorn, pop, popcorn maker burnt the popcorn and set off the smoke alarm, so we all exited out of the building. Well, the guy working at the counter eventually came back and said, hey, it's okay, come back in, finish your movie, and the fire department hadn't gotten there yet, and so I was like, I don't think you're allowed to do that. You know, so the reason for that is, even though you think you may have cleared out all the alarms, uh, you may not be aware of what's something else going on in the building, so when you, if you tell the public to come back in, and then they get injured, uh, or something catastrophic happens, you know, then, then you're liable, or the company's liable. That's why you need to wait for the fire marshal to come, the fire department. They'll check everything out and make sure it's safe before you go back in. That way they carry the liability. 
Um, so one big thing though with this is when you have to have the emergency backup of the battery, uh, one thing that uh, electrical engineer needs to be sure and check is uh, when they do submittals to submit what they're going to install, they should have calculations there for sizing the battery. And what uh, drives that is, you know, how many devices in the building, so especially the strobe lights. As you can imagine, as those strobes are flashing, uh, that starts to put a drain on your battery pretty quick. So uh, they need to be sure to calculate how many of those devices there are, and they have certain programs that help them know what size of batteries they need to put in those uh, in those control panels. So another thing in relation is enunciator panels. Uh, so oftentimes for large systems in large buildings, uh, there may also be uh, enunciator panel or panels located at strategic locations in the building. So an enunciator panel is simply uh, a remote extension of the fire alarm control panel. Uh, and these panels typically display pertinent information about the fire alarm control panel uh, and do allow for some limited interaction. So it's usually located at the main entrances of the building or common entrances. And, and a lot of times you'll coordinate with the fire alarm or fire department where these are supposed to be. And they'll make notes of them in books they keep, you know, carry around with them. And so this is so the fire department can access uh, information from the fire alarm system uh, easily without having to run through the building and find where the fire alarm control panel is. Uh, so it's basically kind of like a remote control device that, that mimics the information from the fire alarm control panel.